I've said it before. Ironically, what began as a secret society on the island where my own grandparents and great-grandparents immigrated from has become a part of nearly every aspect of American culture. From movies like Godfather and Goodfellas to iconic television programs such as The Sopranos and Wise Guy to American history, the Kennedy assassination, the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa. No aspect of American popular culture and history is complete without a discussion of the life. And I want to introduce you to a man who has lived that life, the author of the book, The Life. Larry Mazza. Larry, how are you? I'm great, Matt. Great Thanks. to see you again. Thanks for having me back. Now, it's always a pleasure. We're, uh, we're here to do another sit-down conversation uh, for a combat sports channel. And this is for Dan Theodore, the Wolfman's channel, the Catch Jitsu channel, which is very popular for fighting techniques and is premiering videos with interviews from musicians, entertainers, of course, MMA fighters. And this is part of that series. This is one of the premier videos. So I want you to talk about your upbringing uh, as a youngster and martial arts, which yes. is integral well, to that. Yes, yes. Uh, as a young, young man, young boy, uh, my father put me in uh, the first karate school, I was about 12 years old. Uh, it was very traditional style, uh, which could get boring at times when you're learning all those different katas and things like that. But soon after that, about 14 years old, I switched over to kickboxing, and I was in a school that was uh, run by a four-time champ named Louis Neglia. Uh, I was with him for about three years. Uh, I also got into boxing with a, 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 actually a, a Colombo wise guy named Angelo Defendus. Uh, I was young back then. I, you know, I, I probably shouldn't say Colombo guy. I believe he was, but I was a kid. He was one of the families because we knew he was a made guy. Uh, and, you know, I, I kept it up in my life. I became an instructor. Uh, I kept, even when I later on in life did time, I trained with a lot of guys, some Golden Glove boxes. Uh, actually, uh, trained hard with a guy named Isaac Napa, who won a gold medal. Uh, Black dude, great guy, uh, wound up getting framed for a rape back, this goes way back because there's white, black involved, crazy oh, yeah. stuff. And uh, he got a big sentence for that, but we, uh, good, good guy, we trained a lot. And when I came home back to Florida, uh, I caught back up with guys that I was with from when I used to come back and forth to Florida. Donnie Hare, champion kickboxer, Don the Dragon Wilson, yep. he opened up three of my clubs for me. Awesome. Uh, so... You know, maybe you have him on the show sometime. Yeah, he's, uh, great I mean, to have know, Don yeah, Wilson. Don is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's been, he's still been, he's still filming uh, movies yeah. and uh, still doing seminars and things like that. So, uh, but no, I did. You know, I'm I'm gonna say too, I semi retired almost ten years now. You know, I was still instructing up to about fifty two. Uh, I'm sixty now, and I firmly believe if you can't lead a person where you can go. You, somebody else got to take over, you know. Yeah. It's a young man's sport, young man's game. Sparring, uh, I don't do anymore. I work the bags, I still jump rope, I run a lot, do some weights. But to, yeah, you're to, in great shape. Well, I appreciate that. And, we, you know, my wife and I both work hard on staying in good shape. But, you, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's a young man's game. I, I have no delusions. I'm not looking to become a champion. I never really did. I did it for... Self defense, self esteem. Mm -hmm. Then I enjoyed the the lifestyle. I enjoyed the training. Uh, there's no better physical conditioned person than a fighter. Yeah, absolutely. Bottom line. So. And you know, you have a great gym uh, here. Thank you. In uh, the Cocoa Beach mm -hmm. area, you know, we toured it. It's fantastic yeah. uh, gym, and, and it's yeah. a full weight gym. 
Mm -hmm. They have an outside training area. Yeah. Ton, tons mm -hmm. of mat space. Yep. Well, we've got the dojo uh, eggs, inside. The dojo, yeah, it's fantastic. Weights, machines. Uh, yeah, everything a you know a big giant gym has, and mine is. It's a big know, gym. It, it's big. Yeah, it's, 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 it's big not place. like you know the LA Fitnesses, but it's it's a big gym. It's probably nine thousand square feet or eight thousand yep. square feet. The whole thing. So. Yeah, and not including the yard. And that yard, Absolutely. you know, we do a lot during the winter. Yeah. Yeah. And you talked about the martial arts lifestyle, the fighting lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, you met a beautiful, seductive woman when you yes. were still a teenager yes. that brought you into another lifestyle. Yeah. Talk a little bit about her. Well, yeah, I was I was in all sports. I was in high school. Uh, I played every sport there is. Not even get into it, even hockey. You know, not on a serious level, hockey, but basketball, baseball, football, uh, martial arts. And I was doing all that. And plus, I was working a couple of jobs. And on one of those jobs, I was uh, uh, working in a supermarket. And one of my jobs was to, to deliver groceries to houses where they ordered big orders, like three or four box loads. And at one of those houses, I met this uh, old woman named Linda. And we wound up an attraction. Uh, led to a mutual seduction. Eventually, we were lovers, and that went on for almost ten years. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Linda was a married woman. Yes. And uh, yes. because yeah. of the the home she lived in, you knew that her husband was 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 pretty well off. You thought maybe he well, was. Well, you could see she was certainly not wanting for anything. Yeah. The house was beautiful. Yeah. She had a nice Cadillac. She always dressed yeah. well. Beautiful jewelry. And early on, I thought the husband was a, a rich businessman that had to travel or a doctor with the crazy hours. But uh, as we got closer and closer, she wanted her husband, who she told me was an influential man, still having no idea, uh, and he could do things for you. I'd like you to meet him. To get into the details of that, I think you could, you could visualize mm -hmm. how I felt at that age, meeting the husband of the guy. Uh, kind of wacky to even yeah, bring up. Yeah, just, right? but, you know, but as yeah. time went on, uh, and I've told the story so many times, I, you know, I, I it, it, it almost gets repetitious, but, uh, you know, I started feeling, once I met him. You knew right away this wasn't a. I knew, yes, yeah, absolutely. The way he carried himself, the way he dressed, the way other men around him were super respectful. Uh, when I was working for one of the businesses he put me in charge of, if I went into a store and didn't get the account, either Carmine or Johnny went the next day, mm -hmm. and he says, go back there. I would go back. The guy couldn't wait to give me the account. So I do. There was more than just influence. And, I, you know, I wasn't a dummy, although I was never in that life. I knew about it. You know, yeah. I had an uncle that was uh, with the Colombo family yeah. for many years. My uncle Albert. You met my cousin Joey. Yeah, last time. yeah, Joey. And it's we'll, his father. We'll talk about yeah, Albert yeah, a yeah. little bit yeah. later on. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. but, but at that time, right, so, you, so you meet... Her husband, and you you found out that he had some other women, not so much on his side. He was also yeah. married. Well, along the way, you, you, yeah, we're fast forwarding a little bit. I got so close to him that I started feeling guilty. Yeah. Now that he was helping me, and so ultimately they had a discussion somewhere, and they agreed that it was okay. I don't know all the details to that. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people have different opinions on why he allowed it. You know why it was yeah. okay, but as later on came, I, I found out he had two other wives, uh, one in, in Vegas, and one in South Jersey. And he was he was considerably older than Linda. Linda yeah, was, he was older about twenty years older than yeah. her, and she was about uh, thirteen years older than me. Give it yeah. So he, you were almost kind of doing a service. In a well, sense. I hate to use that word, yeah. but, but yeah. maybe it just made life easier yeah. for, for yeah. him and everybody, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but we got real close. Yeah. The father and I got very close. We were true friends. Uh, I was fiercely loyal to him throughout, uh, which got me closer with his whole family. Yeah. I was his uh, godfather to one of his sons. Uh, I'm still friends with Greg Jr. today. Uh, you know, and we, we really uh, need to, because this again, this is a combat sports channel. Mm -hmm. People were talking about have no idea who the husband is that we're right. talking about. Well, yeah, uh, that, he that's was, true. And uh, he was actually. Um, you could tell who he was. Yeah, his name's Greg Scarpa, and his nickname was the Grim Reaper. He was a heavyweight, very feared gangster, uh, mob guy, made man, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the Colombo family, which is one of the five crime families in New York. And uh, I, 
there weren't many guys, if any, that had more respect and fear than he got. So you can understand how when I found all of this out, oh, yeah. I started getting paranoid. Uh, but ultimately, he he had this discussion with me when we were yeah. alone. We went to the club together one day. Well, we went to the club every day together. We opened up. And one day he started talking about the situation. You know, I know you and Linda are close. I love what you do for her, blah, blah, blah. And he made it clear that he thought I was old enough and, well, mature enough to accept all this. And he told me he knew about me and Linda. So, I mean, my heart was beating, but... You probably you, you was, thought you weren't going to make it out of that. I was, you know, while he was bringing it on, I was concerned, very yeah. concerned. But I also, something, maybe it was that I truly loved her, and I believe she truly loved me, that I said, okay, this is my moment of truth. Yeah. What am I going to do? So I answered him, I said, Greg, I, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. You know, I don't think you're an idiot, but only an idiot wouldn't see it. Yeah. And he laughed. He was very, you know. Unbelievable. He didn't. You know, he, he no mad, nothing. And we walked outside together, and from that moment on, we had a bond yeah. that just got stronger and stronger. We, you know, we should tell people, too, that that's not only is it, are you talking about a married man you know, with, with his wife, but also that was one of the major rules in, in that Oh, life. yeah. When we went outside, yeah. that's one of the first things... Was not to sleep with it. The first thing he told me after it, we, we put it out in the open yeah. was that if anybody outside of the three of us find out about this, you and I will be killed. That's what he said. Yeah. You and I will be yeah. killed. So obviously I wasn't going to tell anybody. I know he wouldn't. And it was a secret. Uh, you know, what's funny is there was one other person that knew because uh, my partner Jimmy worked with me at mm -hmm. Dan's supermarket where I met him. He became... So uh, my right hand man over the years, and yeah. you know my partner and my brother. Uh, so then he met Greg. So it was, you know, he's not you put it mm -hmm. together, and it was just one of those unspoken things. It happened. You know, yeah. Jimmy probably really didn't know it was still going on. Now you, you had brought up something in the past that uh, John Gotti actually violated that rule. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, as the years went on, I I, I learned that all those rules were there. To be broken. Mm. Very, very, you know, you talk about um, sleeping with the wife. Right there, perfect example. Samuel Bull told me about John Gotti, mm -hmm. that he was sleeping with Bella Croce's daughter, who was married. John was married. I think they had a kid together, if I remember this conversation, right? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that that's not good. You're not supposed to uh, kill a boss to take over the family. They did that. Uh, Vicarina tried to do it or tried to oust the boss, Junior Persico, later mm -hmm. on. You're not supposed to sell drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of guys were selling, yeah. uh, and the bosses were allowing it because they were getting money. Yeah. You know, so they tell you you can't to put that facade out. And, you know, as you get older and you're around long enough, you're getting numb to it because, yeah. you know, and then cooperating with the government or talking to law enforcement. Sure. To really fast forward, my boss, all the things I went through with him, how loyal I was to him. We went through a war together. I got made during the war because of what I did during the war and my sure. partner Jimmy. Now, the okay. war you're talking about, we should explain again mm -hmm. uh, to the folks that are listening. Uh, the Colombo family had so much infighting over mm -hmm. the years. And, and yeah. you were involved in, in the last... The last Colombo war. The Colombo yeah. war. Yeah. And... Uh, there's a sto there's a number of stories surrounding that, uh, and uh, one of those stories is uh, relates to uh, the uh, the Nikki Black. Yeah. Uh, the, the hit on Nikki Black. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I'll get to that first. I want to yeah. touch on what you said about the Cuomo family. Yeah. There's been friction in the family for many many years because the boss of the family, Junior Persico was in and out of prison a lot. Yeah. And when he had longer stretches, everybody thought he should have stepped down and put somebody else in. He never did. So he retained control of the family for probably longer than any other boss ever. Yeah. You know? And finally, this one, he gets a life sentence, and he still won't step down. Now, the rule says 
He doesn't have to. He's the boss until he dies, steps down, or gets voted out unanimously by all the captains. That's not going to happen because half of his relatives are captains. So it's never going to happen. And he didn't want to step down. So Vicarina, the one he appointed as acting boss on his behalf while he was away, decides he wants to take over the family. I don't think he made that decision himself. Uh, I know for a fact he didn't because other guys that had gripes from the past with Junior Persico were using this as an excuse, yeah, yeah. okay? Uh, and John Gotti had his uh, motivation. He wanted to be the capo, to do the cap. He yeah. wanted to be the boss of the bosses. bosses. And yeah. while Junior was alive and the chin was alive, he was never going to have that. So if Vic, he backed Vic, and if Vic wins the war, mm -hmm. Vic's underboss is Joey Scopo. Mm -hmm. They were going to kill Vic, have Joey Scopo be elevated. Oh, yeah. John and Joey grew up together in the streets. Yeah, yeah. They're best friends. Now you got two votes on the commission. Yeah. So, you know, everybody, it's, it's treachery. It's yeah, it, backstabbing, and like I said, the, the, the rules mean nothing. Because yeah. you go to the very end, we're talking about the uh, people making deals. They sure. do it in all different ways. There's guys that cop out very weakly where they hurt their co-defendants. There's guys that uh, hit the witness protection program and decide to just do it, you know. Uh, there's guys that, and it just happened to Sammy, and it happened to me to an extent, where... Your co-defendants are throwing all the weight onto you. They're throwing all yeah. the damage. Like my boss, Alley Boy, after he told me he knew about Greg for 30 years, uh, for 20 years, and Greg was a, 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 a governor and foreman for 30 years, uh, I saw paperwork where he was leaving a closing summation for his attorney. Yeah. I'm going to be sitting at the table with him, and it says that Greg and his guys, that's me and Jimmy, were totally responsible for the war. That's not a rat. Throw I me mean, under the bus. Yeah, yeah. there's so many, you know. Yeah, so, so many ways. It, it, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting, and I want to get back to the Colombo War aspect. But yeah. Something we talked about in the last time we, we, we were had one of these interviews was a quote that um, I was told from Phil Baroni Sr., who was a gold star detective that had gotten involved in that light. What, and he said, if you want to be a gangster, get a badge yeah and you know I know it's a rule and this yeah. is kind of a question I know it's a rule and close the notes to not to talk mm -hmm. to but but do you think that it's smarter well in hindsight absolutely because a lot of guys are doing it anyway yeah uh, that's one thing like when I talk about Greg I say a lot of things about how he was a tough guy and kid nobody can ever deny that uh, ruthless fearless you name it the end of the day, he did have the badge. Certainly helps. Yeah. But I think somewhere in the recesses of my mind, what bothers me more than anything, is that he confided everything with me. Yeah. Confided in me and everything. There's nothing he didn't tell me. There's nothing we didn't do together. Uh, and he never even gave me an inkling that that's the way to go. That, yeah, exactly. Now, it sounds, I guess, double-edged. Because then I would probably do the same thing. Yeah. But if you're teaching me to life, and that's well, the way to survive, how'd you leave that out? It's it's interesting. You know, because you guys had already confided in breaking one rule that could have gotten you both killed, right? Right. So you you would think if he was if he was a a friend, I know he's your, yeah, you know I, your boss, but a friend, you know, he might confide in you in that. He he you didn't know? he didn't confide in his own son Gregory. Yeah. So, uh, and he, he actually throw, threw us all under the bus at the end. He tried to save somebody else. He could have uh, put in some better words for myself and Jimmy and his son Gregory. Let me tell you people something. Yeah. If you read this book, The Life, this is a fantastic book. One of the main things that I took away from this book was that Greg Scarpa, the Grim Reaper, was very, very selfish. Now, would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, egotistical, selfish, yeah. Uh, Greedy, cheap, loved money. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, in well, some ways he was cheap. Car, in, in some yeah. ways he was cheap yeah. because, uh, you know, using the cards, using yeah, the credit cards, yeah. fake credit cards. But that wasn't out of cheap. That was just out of uh, being brazen. 
I remember yeah. saying the food tastes better when it's when free. When it's free, that's what you I was know, thinking. For, but yeah. I would say to him, a hundred dollar check, one hundred fifty dollars, you could risk a pinch. Yeah. But yeah. and again, he knew he had no problem. Yeah. He wasn't gonna get pinched. Yeah. Uh, so, it, it, so again, going back to when I talk about him, a lot of times, sometimes people will say to me, they still see that feeling. Yeah. And yeah, you can't just turn things on and off. You know, I did have years under him, uh, the way he groomed me educated me to the life, uh, at the end was very uh, supportive of me moving up because he was yeah. he was getting close to death, uh, he was, yeah. you know, he was sick, he had got the AIDS, which is another story, it's all in the book, uh, and he, he got into a bad blood transfusion. Yeah. And, you know, all the way to the very end, but then to find out that he was an informant for all those years yeah. and really hurt so many people. Yeah. Being that, I could never forgive and forget. You know, I relive it. I always think about it. Uh, I try to move on past it, which I have. Sure. You know, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing better now than ever in my yeah, life. Doing so, fantastic. I'm doing better than ever. But you know what's kind of ironic? Like, a lot of people will think, with a lot of guys that are out of the life, that they'd be worried about people coming after them from Cosa Nostra. I think in your case, you probably be more concerned about the FBI. Well, I, yeah, I have, I've said yeah. that, and you, yeah. you remember yeah. from the book, because, oh, yeah. you know, when I decided to throw in the towel, yeah. okay, it wasn't because I couldn't take prison. I was doing fine. I was doing my time. I was fighting my case. I was working out every day. I was in the, in the thing. I was already in cop-out mode. If I could have got yeah. a good deal, I would have took it. And, and I had Jimmy as a bargaining chip because he was still out. Yeah. So they would have probably maybe given us some kind of reasonable deal. Sure. They never came under 25 years, but yeah. till the end. So anyway, when they all came out about Greg and, and Allie Boy that he did, was going to do what he did and told me that he knew, it made it easier for me. Sure. So I started talking to my attorneys, and when they heard about the corruption, which they already knew about, but they knew I had information, uh, that became my saving grace. Sure. And, you know, I had information on... Uh, uh, a secret frequency yeah. that we got so we could listen to the FBI as yeah. they were tailing us and our, and our uh, enemies. Yeah. We had access to FBI badges and uh, ID cards ID, yeah. in case we wanted to go in on a place and yeah. grab one of our enemies like that. We had information on, we got addresses of where our enemies were. And I knew all this. And I had a phone that we used to use, like the old, old tape, uh, Portable phones. Portable phone. yeah, yeah. You don't see them anymore, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But back then we didn't have cell phones. Yeah. And we had this big phone, and he would call somebody. Yeah. And he was getting information. So I had that phone number of who he was calling. Yeah. So they knew I had a lot of information, but nobody knew exactly who it was. Then he said it was a girlfriend or something. That he, he used to call it the girlfriend. Yeah. My yeah. girlfriend gave me information. But we, and yeah. he would laugh, and we says, who is it? We got to know. Yeah. That's what yeah. happens to you. He says, someday I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so that really is what saved my life. I mean, they, you know, after Greg and Carmine and uh, a bunch of other guys were already cooperating and ready to testify, so they really couldn't get anything new out of me. Yeah. You know, I wound up getting 10 years. The guys that give them blockbuster stuff walk a lot sooner than that, yeah. you know. But I don't care about that. I mean, I did 10 years. I said, I, I did it. I yeah. came out in great shape. I, yeah. I, I, you know, I came out smarter than I went in. Uh, and I use that now for the rest of my life. Yeah. Now, kind of backtracking a little bit, with your Uncle Alvin, mm -hmm. during that last Colombo War, mm -hmm. um, he was kind of semi-retired, but he was he was on the other side of the family, right? And did he tell you about Nikki Black? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened, well, two people, more than just my uncle. What happened was, uh, yeah, my Uncle Albert was in his 80s, yeah. so he wasn't active in the war. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want no part of it. He had no motives to move up, no nothing. So he was under this guy, uh, his captain named Nicky Black, grandson. Yeah. And Nicky was uh, going to be Vic Arena's consul, yeah. And, and Nick, Nicky chose Vic's side because when he got straightened out, when he got made, Junior made it with a clause that he could never rise above soldier. And there was a reason for that, because he did a favor to get this guy made because he was making a fortune with the teams. Yeah, yeah. And he bypassed other guys that deserved it more. Yeah. So, including my uncle Bobby. 
So, anyway, he bolts to the other side. During the war, we're doing so much damage that they decided they had to break up our group. We'll kill the three of us. Get us. They were going to try to kill us anyway, but they weren't having any luck. Yeah. Uh, so, Nikki tells my Uncle Albert that he's going to kill me. Their plan was to, if they could get me or Jimmy, just a week. So he says he's going to kill you, you know, his own nephew. But he tells no, no. Him. No, no, he no. no. Tells he Albert. tells Albert yeah, that yeah. he's going to kill his own yeah, nephew. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And the funny thing is somebody else in that club heard it and told Carmine Sessa. Okay. Who was our consul. Yeah, yeah so it came yeah. from two different people. Okay. It wasn't only my uncle, but my uncle was the one I approached. Yeah. That night I went to his house and I, I, I asked him about it. And he says, yeah. He says, he's done it for you. And, uh. He says, be careful. And I says, thank you, Uncle Albert. And I remember him telling me, it's one of the last things I said to my Uncle Albert until he came to visit me when I was in prison, uh, was that blood is thicker than water. Oh, yeah. Don't ever forget that. So I knew he wasn't gonna ever give me a problem. He'd help me. So we made Nikki our number one target after that. And uh, within a few days, if that long, could have been the next day. I mean, we got lucky fast. We started looking for him, and boom, we, we, we found, found him, him. Found him and, on and, and didn't he think that you guys were uh, were yeah. cops? Yeah. Well, we think so because yeah. we were we were dressed up that way. Yeah. You know, we had baseball caps on. Yeah. We had coffee cups in the window. We had binoculars. Yeah. We wanted to look like we were surveilling. Yeah. Even if innocent people walked by and looked, they think you were cops, probably. Hopefully. Yeah. And that we found out later that they were tailing him all day. There was yeah. like four or six, four, five, six units that were tailing him the whole time. And, and we should, we and should just, probably, we should probably, I don't want to, but we should probably bring this up. There's an important aspect of that. Is by that point, Greg Scarpa, the Grim Reaper, had a horrible debilitating disease. Yeah, yes. That's, I, I mentioned it before. Yeah. He got AIDS through a bad blood transfusion during operations. Yeah. And uh, he was getting a little slower in the mind. Yeah. Dementia was starting to hit him losing a lot of weight it was real tough just to stay alive i mean he had to eat like six seven times a day yeah to try to keep weight on all kinds of medications uh but uh, the guy he hung on a long time he hung yeah. on i gotta give him that he hung on so he had the money to get access yeah yeah, to yeah just like you yeah, know magic, like johnson, magic johnson back in the day yeah, yeah it's true because this is about the same time it's really yeah. 87 88 uh when he but he got it and this yeah. we're talking closer to 90 just about 90 91 when all the mayhem really started so anyway this, this this day we find them and uh we just fought he, he he was pulling up to meet meet a guy yeah. in front of his car service which he did then he drove around the block we followed him he was heading almost back to where he came from and he pulled over to meet another guy and when he did we rolled up alongside of him and uh you know greg had the rifle that he he grown accustomed to he liked it but <clears throat> He hit the wrong clip, oh, button, yeah. and the bullets came out instead of the safety. So I believe he had one bullet in there. I, to this day, I'm not 100% sure because I think, I don't remember hearing two shots. Yeah. But it could have been muffled by mine because yeah. I had the shotgun. And it was, yeah. You know. And, uh, yeah, I, I got up very yeah. close to Mickey, and it was, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, I don't know what's the word to use. It's uh, brutal. Well, no, yeah, 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 all of that, yes, but it was a historical, you know, in, yeah. in New York in recent times, the only one that was probably more public or bigger than that was Paul Castellano. Paul Castellano, yeah. Because this was a, an eventual consul, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was a powerhouse, everybody knew yeah. him, uh, you know, thousands of people were out there, yeah. literally, the whole neighborhood yeah, was there. And, and I remember yeah. you, you talking about that, because Nikki Black was so big in New York at that time, Especially and didn't that you guys circle back? Yeah. And, and kids were talking about Later it. on, yeah. we went and switched cars. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you a little funny antidote. We had to go babysit Jimmy's daughter. Yeah, yeah. So we get back to the house, and the wife has to go somewhere. It's going to take about an hour yeah. or so. So we sit down. I think it's like 6 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. We have a vodka. Yeah. We're sipping a yeah. vodka. And we're watching Seinfeld. Seinfeld. <laughs> and uh, then when Margaret comes back, we jump back in the car, we're gonna go shoot by Greg and maybe have a drink with him, go eat, whatever. Yeah. So as we're going, we take McDonald Avenue and the scene was like out of a movie. Yeah. All around, unbelievable. So I pull up and I open the window 
and there's a bunch of teenagers yeah. hanging out on the corner. And I says, uh, wow, what happened here? And they says, oh, a big mob guy got killed. There's yeah. a mob war going on. Yeah. And I told them, no kidding. I shut the window. I saw my face for a second, and I, and I, I sort of got a little reality. Yeah, out of it. you know, yeah. after they said that, I was driving yeah. away to surreal everything. That was such a major yeah. hit. It just yeah. happened. No, it yeah. was. It was. You know, it was by far the biggest hit of the war. Yeah, and it was one that shattered the arena side. Sure, a lot of dissension. Sure. Uh, now they were, you know, looking to patch it up, but they would never recognize Junior. That's the problem. So it never yeah. got put back together. Yeah. They kept saying no. Anything else, whatever you want. And yeah. we couldn't give in, so. There's, uh, there's one other aspect, one other story uh, from the, the Colombo War that you talked about. Um, and there's so many great stories in this book. I want to tell yeah. everybody to buy the life. I wanted to talk about that story. First, tell people where they can get the book. Yeah, you could get it. At, I have a website. I wrote the book myself. I self-published. Did that for a reason uh, because I had a lot of high hopes for it, thinking it would make it to TV and movies. And this is something uh, new that you haven't heard yet. That we, ha I have a producer, uh, and the producer is uh, very close to launching his own network. Yeah. So I can't say much more about that, but uh, so it will be on that network. Awesome. awesome. And De Niro told me it was very smart doing it this way because I don't yeah. have to buy yeah. rights back from a company yeah. or anything like that. Well, we're going to talk so, about it. But you, but, but uh, you, you yeah. can, I'm sorry, but you, you can get it. I want to yeah, finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah www.larrymazza-thelife.com. Awesome. Yeah, so. check it out. And we're going to talk about Larry, uh, Robert De Niro. Yeah. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. movies and such. I want to close with that. Okay. But before I do, uh, towards the end of that last Colombo War, there was a very brutal hit on uh, Larry Lantesa. Yeah. yeah, you know, the, the war became a nightmare. All right. Uh, you know, we talk about it now like it's uh, just everyday stories or, you know, uh, but a, a guy once said to me on a podcast, it seems like you get desensitized. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great word he used. Yeah. And you do. And you forget what it's real, what's really happening. But we're yeah. killing each other. Yeah. You know, you, you know, it could have, it, it, I could have been in Desert Storm shooting yeah. and getting killed around friends and stuff. Obviously, those are for more noble reasons, you would think. Who knows well, today with the government? Let's not. But, wars, yeah. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, so, but what happened was we were getting so frustrated that these guys wouldn't give in. Yeah. You know, none of our guys, we, we shouldn't say none, but we were doing damage every day. Yeah. Somebody was getting shot, hurt, whatever. And they were getting frustrated. They couldn't get us. But I, you know, I remember saying to Greg, uh, and this is how far I came from a delivery boy to where I was now. Yeah. That I said, you know, Greg, I think we got to massacre somebody. Yeah. I can't believe that they came out of my yeah. mouth. But, yeah. you know, you were just thinking, because we got to get this over with. I said, we got to yeah. make them think, you know, we're not only going to shoot them, we're going to just, you know. Yeah. So this one, it was a, it was a guy, Larry. He, uh, we got information from the girlfriend. His exact time that he leaves the house. And it was between 3.15 uh, and 3.30, or 3.30 and 3.45. Probably that, because we got there at 3.20. That I remember. So it was probably 3.30 to 3.45. We get there at 3.20. Ten minutes goes by. The most, the lights come on the caddy, like he said. Yeah. He backs out. And we were told that he would get out of the car. Yeah. Go lock the gate. Yeah. And come back to the car. Yeah, 3 a.m. By the time yeah. he... By the time he walk to the gate to lock it we were already there okay greg had his rifle yeah he shot him he went down the three of us got out of the car jimmy really wasn't supposed to because he's the driver yeah he drove behind the wheel but he was frustrated too and it was three o'clock in the morning i would rather been home sleeping yeah. you know uh so we walked up to him and the three of us were standing over him and he said something to the effect like do it do it already. Yeah, he's getting you know, over with. Or yeah. what did I do is a possibility. Yeah. I think he was saying do it. Do it. Yeah. So we opened up on him, the three of us. And Jimmy finished him with one behind the ear. And he was done. But the reason I mention that, two of the hits, the Vicky Black hit and the Larry hit, Greg 
embellish them, okay, by saying things to others that didn't happen. Like, after he said, do it, do it, Greg told Carmine Sessa that he said, what did I do? And Greg answered, this is what he said, he, which he didn't say, you picked the wrong side, okay? That came back to be evidence of proof yeah. that there was two sides. Yeah. And it was never yeah. said. Yeah. And I, you know, so it's out there now, whether it's too late or what. But Greg was smart in a all, sinister way. Yeah. Right? Oh, no, yeah. definitely. But also, on the Nicky Black hit, he goes back and tells Carmine Sessa that he told him, this is for Carmine. Yeah. <laughs> that was used as evidence. Yeah. He never said anything. Yeah. And Jimmy and I laugh about that to this day. He had to say yeah. that. It became evidence. He never said it. Yeah. And guys got hurt because of it. You know? That's, that's so, awesome. yeah. It's, uh... Yeah. And then Carmine says, uh, at the tail end of the war, calls a meeting at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. Probably about six or eight guys show up. They all get pinched on the steps. They get arrested oh, by the FBI. Yeah. They all go one direction, Carmine gets in another car and goes another direction. He set the whole thing up. He set him up, yeah. Yep. So that was the first ship to fall on the Columbo. Not the first one, but two lower level guys were cooperating. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much damage they would have done in the long run, but paved the way for Carmine to come in. Now they had the console, yeah. Yeah. So then they had Greg's story, then they had four or five other main guys in the family yeah. talking. So just, you know, it's a domino thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, so I like to, you know, uh, I say to myself, I, even in conversations with people, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, yeah. Same thing here. If I can go back in time, or the world could go back in time, I would wish that they never allowed this hearsay. They yeah. never allowed a guy to come in and say, he did this, he did this. Exactly. Go get the evidence, exactly. okay? But they allowed this now. Yeah. So Carmine jumped at the opportunity. Joe uh, uh, Messina jumped at the opportunity. Yeah. These are bosses. Yeah. Gas Pipe jumped at the yeah. opportunity. Sammy Gr the Bull yeah. jumped at the opportunity. Yeah. They opened the door for this opportunity. Yeah, exactly. So now, what is a guy like me supposed to do? Just take a life sentence when my own boss, my second father, threw me under the yeah. bus, yeah. it's hard to swallow. That's what you so you go make a deal. Thing. You go yeah. make a deal. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I don't know what else anybody could expect after hearing all that. And then finding out your boss knew about Greg all those years yeah. and let him live. Absolutely. And to read the paperwork that... It's amazing he that was, the boss yeah, knew about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, if you think about it, here's, here's the motives. First of all, he was able to kill without yeah. ever having to. Right. So they hired him to kill. That's right. Give the, the yeah. jobs to Greg. He never gets pinched. Yeah, exactly. Okay? He was a heavyweight earner. And years later, I was trying to do research, whether it was my book or just curiosity and different things. And one of the attorneys on our case wound up marrying a co defendant of mine. Wow. That's a friend of mine yeah. to this day. And I'll never forget. We knew he was bad. Now we knew for 30 years. Yeah. But when Ali told me he knew, he said 20 years. So we knew about him for 20 years. So I said to myself, there had to be a big event yeah. in that time frame. And what it was, there was a big IRS case coming against the upper echelon of the Colombo family. Eight guys or so, and Greg was one of them. So they go to court. The first day in court, they do their talking, whatever, and they put it for another, they put it off, They like yeah. they do all the time. So three weeks go by, give or take, they come to the second meeting. Seven of the defendants are there, Greg isn't, okay? They call it off again. Month goes by, they come in again. Seven of the eight defendants are there, Greg is not there. So they have to call it off again. Yeah. Another month goes by, they all come in again. Seven of them are there. Greg isn't. They throw the case out. What was this, a negotiation by yeah. Greg all this time? So, I got to believe that Junior knew something was up, but he said, hey, he saved us. What do we care? Oh, yeah. You know, so he sort of got a pass. That's then right. they used yeah. him. Then yeah. they used him to kill and make money. And he was a machine at both. 
Yeah, that, that's so, why I was asking you originally. I yeah. know it's a rule yeah. that you're not supposed to you know, cooperate or work course. with the feds. Of but course. is it is it a smart rule? And and, and I, I think about it this way. You, you, you compare it to like uh, the cartels. Yeah. The cartels in Mexico and South America, a lot of them are the, the, the federales. You know, they work together. Yes. So would it, would it have been better with Cosa Nostra to work with? Well, you know, you know, because because the politicians are corrupt. I mean, you have a great uh, of course. a great but, quote about politics, and yeah. uh, what what do you what is how do you define politics? Well, if you break the word up, yeah, to Greek, yeah, poly means many, yeah. ticks, blood sucking insects, blood sucking insects. So yeah. that's what they are. And you mentioned are, war. Yeah. You know, you mentioned yeah. the, you mentioned the mob war. Yeah. Five-star General Smedley Butler said a famous quote about war. He said, war is a racket. So I kind of think of the government yeah. as kind of an extension of well, it is corruption, if you, go, if, you know. So why, why not work with them? Well, you know? if you go back far enough, there's people that believe uh, Hoover yeah. was somehow connected because yeah. he never yeah. confirmed that they were there. He sort of denied it, sure. he never wanted to make them a target. As soon as he was out of there, a lot sooner as it became a thing, they became, they had these hearings, and sure. eventually they were, they were public enemy number one. And it wasn't, a, so, wasn't Kennedy, Robert Kennedy was a big He was a big problem. Yeah. yeah. And he stabbed them in the back because yeah. the Kennedys were put there by the money yeah. guys. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of that. Greg had told me some things about the government, and in hindsight, yeah. you know, uh, I, I, I can see. see it now. But he's not the only one. Yeah. You know, Whitey yeah. Bulger, sure. we know that story. Yeah. Uh, there's others coming out here and there. Sure. And, That's why I say, know. what I say is that, you know, I know it's a rule, but is yeah. it a smart rule? As I say, you know, people can kind of think on their own. Yeah. Uh, but but I wanted to segue to something uh, mm -hmm. here. Uh, and I wanted to segue to entertainment. And yeah. uh, The Godfather, such an iconic movie. Right? And you're part of the Colombo family, right? Joe Colombo. Who was the namesake of the mm -hmm. Colombo family was very against the movie uh, and the right. movie's release because, like I said in the open, it's supposed to be a secret society. And right. now, iconic movies are these mob movies. And and I like to ask you, you know, you know what my favorites? My favorites. I told you, Bronx Tale. I thought it was such a great movie uh, well, because of because it was so authentic, and you got. Uh, Armand, I'm not Armand Vicente, but sure. um, Chaz Palminteri's life, and it did the one-man show, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 yeah. and all that. What are your favorite uh, mob movies? Well, that's up there. Bronx Taylor's yeah. up at the top. I'll, I'll give you, like, my top three. That's one of them. Yeah. I'm not going to say The Godfather because it was for so long. And yeah. to me, it's probably still the best movie. Great, great Almost movie. the best movie ever made, if not the best. There's a, it's arguable. I mean, yeah, I love Casablanca. I yeah, can watch that a hundred sure. times, you know. Uh, but I loved Once Upon a Time in America. Yeah, it's a long movie. Uh, you gotta watch it probably more than once to yeah. grasp all the things that are going on. Uh, you know, I just love that. Uh, Bronx Tale, and probably I'll go off the movies and I'll go to The Sopranos, the Sopranos because too. it was very, very realistic. Yeah, it was realistic because there's a lot of funny things that happened in our life. Did they take something from uh, your case? Well, they took from a lot of different yeah. things. The one they took from uh, my case was after the Nicky Black hit, the alleged corrupt agent banged his desk and yeah. said, we're going to win this thing. Yeah. And that's what started his downfall because two of his own agents started questioning his morals and his ethics. And then it, obviously his criminal nature. Yeah. You know, at that point it was like, you know, uh, I guess it's maybe in their eyes ethical. He's getting too close to his, his, his uh, informant, whoever it was. I don't think they all knew, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, he, yeah, when he banged the desk and said, we're going to win this thing, there was an episode in uh, The Sopranos, because they were at war, yeah. Uncle Junior and Soprano, Tony and some others. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it was an FBI agent. Or, yeah, it was in the, in, the movie, in The Sopranos that banged the desk and banged said, we're going to win this yeah. thing. Same exact yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. So yeah, they, uh, it, 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 and it's funny because I had this discussion with a friend of mine who was a was a manager for entertainers, musicians, yeah. basically. Yeah. But he sort of loves, he's following my yeah. life. 
And uh, he said sometimes it gets confusing to him whether it is art imitating life. A life imitating life. Or life imitating <laughs> art. And he goes back and forth. He says, is it yeah. art imitating life imitating art? Or is it art imitating life imitating art? You know, and yeah. you could go back and forth with that because guys are using lines from the movies. They do, yeah, they yeah, use yeah, them. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, I mean, a, a guy can, in prison when I'm, we're fighting the case, uh, yeah. and I remember Ali telling me he wanted us to all patch up with Wild Bill. Yeah. Now, Wild Bill was an enemy of ours. I yeah. mean, probably next to Vic Arena, the guy we wanted yeah. the most, and Joe Scopo. And he wants us to make up with him. And I said, Ali, why would we want to make up with him? Yeah. I mean, he caused all this, a lot of this commotion here. And he says to me, you keep your friends close, you keep your enemies close. <laughs> take I, I, you know, I walked away <laughs> saying to myself, does he think I didn't see the Godfather? I mean, I know the lines. Uh, and But other lines are used to, yeah. like, make him an offer he can't refuse. Come yeah. on. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. It's, you know, it's part of the whole, it's, it's gotten watered down, it's gotten diluted. But I got to say this, too. Uh, I have been blessed because yeah. of the book was so well received. Uh, I've had agents, police, uh, the prosecutor of the yeah. uh, corrupt agent, uh, actors, you name it, old yeah. friends from the neighborhood, new friends, to to tell me what a great book it is yeah. and how uh, it's true to the life it is. And, uh, and because of that, the, the cops that were, the task force cops that yeah. were working with the feds, he told De Niro. They now work. Yeah, yeah. they now work for Robert De Niro. Yeah. yeah, When he was doing The Irishman, they asked him who he. Yeah. They is there somebody you can get to me that I can talk to yeah. and learn? They said me. They brought you in as a They brought me in. Yeah. So I went. I was in De Niro's. Uh, I was with him a half a dozen times in different. You know, in his office on set, whatever, and talking yeah. to him and working with him. Uh, then I went and met him along with Scorsese, Martin Scorsese, yeah. at Marty Scorsese's house. Then I met Nick Pileggi, who was on board to write the screenplay. Yeah. Uh, also, who would you have play you in the life? Um, what actor? Well, you know, it's changed over the years because of the age and everything. You know, there was a point where I thought... But a young you, who would you have? A young me? You still look young. You well, still look you, but I, I'm saying, you know, well, you and your 20. I, here, let me give you an example. <clears throat> Ten years ago, yeah. I thought the Baldwin brothers... Would have been perfect. Oh, yeah. There's a young one. Who's Billy, probably, Billy Baldwin? The youngest yeah. one 10 years ago was maybe yeah. in his 30s. He could have, could have pulled it off. Yeah. Or, you know, then a little later on, and ultimately it's Alec playing the Alec older. Alec Baldwin one. playing the older. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, but you now, look younger than Alec Baldwin. Well, I, th I think I am younger than him. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I. So it changes. Yeah. It changes over the years. You know, That's a good but, one, but, though, somebody, the but yeah. somebody, there's casting directors, they'll yeah. figure that out because they'll see the way I am, the way I act, sure. and they'll find an actor that doesn't really have to act. Yeah. I've yeah. learned that. You know, they'll get somebody they're not going to get. Uh, Who would you have play Greg Scarpa? Well, I'll tell you what, a guy, not a heavyweight, over the top, well known actor named Rick Borgia. Rick Borgia. Played him, played him yeah. uh, in a documentary. Okay. And I gotta say, he was very good. He had a good presence. He had the, the ways. He was he was good. You okay. know. Uh, if they went for a bigger name, you know, uh, I'm friends with Armando Sante. I just, yeah. They may be able to say. I think at this stage, his age, he's up there. He's great. not a young. young he young, played a great John Gotti in the best HBO. Ever, the best. Yeah. The best at all. I think he would fit in. Uh, I'm friends with Mike Madsen. I think he could play. You know, he's a little bit taller and a little, but he's and he's a little more. His voice isn't as deep yeah. as Greg's, but yeah. he's got a raspy voice. Yeah. But there's guys. I got my friend Greg De, uh, Craig DeFrancia, who was in the Green Book. Sure. And uh, he was also my fellow hitman in The Irishman. Sure. Because I didn't get to that. I got, a got one part. more for you. I got a, yeah. Who would play Linda Scarpa? Well, there was a time Marissa Tomei would have been good. She's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And she fits the mold. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but again, as time goes by, I'm not two up on the younger actors and actresses today. It would have to be somebody else. I got one for you <clears throat> that would play her. Uh, Mila, Mira Kunis? Mila Kunis? Not She's sure. married to, um, uh, uh, God, I'm drawing a blank. She was just in a movie that I saw. Everybody can look her up. Mila Kunis. Okay. Oh, she's gorgeous. I yeah. think she would be a good yeah. one. There was, I don't know if you remember Linda Fiorentino. Yeah, I do, yeah. I thought she yeah. would have been a perfect Linda. She yeah. had the same subtle ways. 
much, you know. But all that changes over the years. But like, you know, going back to what I said, it's gotten me in a lot of doors. It's uh, my sure. producer wants to put me uh, as a host on a couple of shows that yeah, he's working awesome. on. Yeah. So that'll be good. We may have great, we may have a role reversal down there. Yeah, the road that'd be great. Where man. you're gonna come in and, and, and sit with me or it'd be uh, awesome. And and yeah. If you want to do picks for yeah. for fights too, I'd love to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. Well that's right. one of them. We mentioned there's yeah. gambling shows a possibility because that's basically well, what I Larry, we're going a little long here, okay. but it's but it's well worth it. Uh great mm -hmm. great information and, and a great time. And I want to close with a question for you. Mm -hmm. If we could go back in time, mm -hmm. you know, now you've got a great life now. Mm -hmm. If we could go back in time to that young Larry Moss, John Jay College that was going to mm -hmm. be a fireman, and would you have cut it off with Linda, the affair, early in its infancy, and become a fireman, or would you, would you have led the life that you've led? Well, you know... It would be easy to say, or probably a cop out to say, I would have taken the fire department test. Because I can't say, I, then it would be saying that it wasn't a true affair with her. And it was. Yeah. There were feelings. You were truly in love. There this was, was a, this right. was a love affair. So yeah. that love affair took me where it took me. Yeah. Now, obviously, things went terribly wrong mm -hmm. for all of us the kids, the families, everybody. Friends of ours, yeah. you know. So now I did my time. I come home, and different doors have opened. Sure. Okay. I if, if it wasn't for me getting in that life, I wouldn't have my son. Today. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. I met the girl, my first wife. You wouldn't have had all of the friends you had. I yeah. met her yeah. through the life, yeah. and then because she she was a, a haircut above yeah. the club, and I have a son, so I won't have him. And I wouldn't have Kelly in my life now. Yeah. Because you all of these life, things, before. Yeah. all of these things led me to where I am now. So really, <laughs> I do nothing different except maybe try to talk people out of the murders. I've always felt that way. I yeah. think it got too easy to kill. I still yeah. feel that way. And it sounds like up in New York, they've changed that. They're here's not, a crazy not question. So for you. I said it was last question, but mm -hmm. here's a crazy question. Uh, was is there any point? Uh, that you could have gotten away from Greg and not gotten wrapped up in, in, in the case. Uh, I know you were you. No, not you, not you, no, not with the way you been straightened out everything. But but I was. There's I, no way. I was. Forget that. That came yeah. very before that. I was brought in by him. I met so many heavyweights, so many higher ups in the family. I was known as his best friend, his closest, yeah. his right hand man, and I was fiercely loyal to him. Jimmy was fiercely loyal to both of us. Yeah. Uh, and you know, he didn't want anybody else around him. So yeah. I had that sense of loyalty. Sure. There's an ethic and integrity sure. to being true to your friends. Yeah, exactly. And I was, because you know, everybody in the family isn't your friend. Just like any other big organization. Yeah. The friends was, was him, sure. his son. And that's what made me and Greg Jr. so close because of how close I was to Big Greg. Sure. And you may be doing a, uh, an interview with Greg Jr. someday. That'd be great. Yeah, because he's be, home now, yeah. thank God. And, uh, and, and he hasn't done any interviews. Well, you know, he, he spent 33 years in home. Yeah. A lot of the years yeah. in solitary. Uh, I, I, he doesn't want to have any issues. He wants to make sure whatever he does is above, you know, ground, above, uh, you know. Within, and he's in a tight spot, too, yeah. because, you know, it's his father. Right. So you, know, you, you certainly yeah. be careful what well, you say about your father. We are, but we're in the same wavelength. Yeah, he, yeah. Be, he. It's hard for him to forgive and forget, but again, it is his father, so you know, yeah. it'd be easier than it is for me. Sure. But he, he, we both have the same views. Sure. Uh, it's just you know he doesn't want to have any headaches with the government. They may sure. not be looking forward to hearing from him, uh, yeah. but at some point, it's America. Sure, exactly. Even though it may not look that way today. Yeah. If you want to go into politics, let's do part two. Yeah. But not now. But, yeah, we, did, uh, we touched on yeah, politics a little before. Yeah. There'll be a point uh, where Gregory should be able to tell his story because it's it's an American tragedy. Sure. You know? And I just want to close with one yeah. thing here. I want to show people the book. And I want to say, as, as an author myself, Larry does a tremendous job with this book. There's a lot of passion in here. Um, the passion between him and Linda. Uh, it's, this is not just a book about 
uh, the life. This is also a love story. Yeah. And uh, and that women, I think, will enjoy as well in the love sense story, that it's, yeah. there's a love I mean, there's I, a love story I there. I get a lot of girls that buy yeah. the book, and there was a lot of passion. I sign every book that I send yep. out, and uh, I get a lot of people on different media places where they show it and they thank me for signing it. Yeah. And I I love that. Absolutely. Well, Larry, yeah. thanks again. Great time. We'll see you.